Hi guys and girls, Gallifrey from 97 here. Uh, and welcome to today's video where I'll be reviewing the new 5.5 inch uh, Doctor Who uh, action figures for 2017. Uh, so the three figures include the 10th Doctor in Tuxedo from Voyage of the Dam, which is 2007. So I've been waiting a long time for this figure. I was hoping this was released uh, at the time when the episode was announced and um, with the Voyage of the Dam box set. And we also have the two new uh, Capaldi variants from Series 9. The one on the left is from Under Lake and the one on the right is from uh, the girl who died. So without further ado, Anon Z, shut up, trying to combine these two doctors phrases, <laughs> it's not going to work, let's take a look at the packaging. The packaging uh, for these three figures are basically the same uh, with a couple of tweaks in each one. For example, uh, the 10th Doctor and Tuxedo figure box uh, uses a sort of 8th Doctor classic logo, whereas the new 12th Doctor variants uses uh, the 12 Doctors Dot 2 logo. <laughs> um, but say so you got the standard stuff, 5 plus, uh, what this figure is, 5 inch scale, 14 centimeters, uh, which is, you know, a bit off with the Capaldi figure, but more about that <laughs> when we get into it. You've got scammy codes uh, on each one of the boxes. On the back of each box, uh, you get a description of the Doctor that is included. So for example, you get a different one for the 12th Doctor, um, and it is the same for both variants, but you do get a different one, obviously, for the 10th Doctor. Uh, and there's a great promotional picture uh, of the Doctor's uh, with sort of white uh, ominous uh, layer around it. Well, I really like what they've done is they've put all the legal stuff on the bottom of the box. So when you look at the back of the box, um, you've just got the sort of capture stuff and the contents and the BBC logo stuff. It's really nice that they've thought about that and they've put that at the bottom as opposed to uh, sort of filling it at the bottom, which so it really adds um, to the nice uh, collector's box. Each figure is displayed in the box really nicely, uh, featuring the Doctor and the sonic screwdriver uh, akin to that adopter um, there is a really nice background as well um, which features a mix of sort of time lord and cogs uh, which links to the sort of series 8 themes um, but this is used on the 10th doctor one uh, so it would have been nice to have had a variant uh, for that for the 10th doctor collector figure but that means character spending money which is not going to happen so first up, I'm going to be reviewing the 10th Doctor in Tuxedo uh, from 2007's Voyage of the Damned. Uh, Doctor 2 fans and collectors have been begging for this figure uh, since the episode, because, you know, it's a very, very pretty much easy variant to do, but they never did it. Um, but now we do have it. Um, is it 10 years too late? Maybe. <laughs> I think a lot of people sort of forgotten at this point. It's a really random release. Um, but the plus side for it being released this late um, is the articulation, uh, ball jointed arms, uh, which really um, put upside to the figure. So first of all, I'm going to take a look at the articulation, uh, which is as follows. Uh, the head can turn side to side. It'd probably do 360, but don't want to scratch the neck. Uh, the arms do a full uh, turn. Uh, as I say, ball jointed arms, so you can pretty much move any direction you want them to. Uh, bicep movement up and down the joint. Uh, hands do do a full 360. Uh, same for the others. Uh, the waist can do a full 360. Exorcist twist. Um, so the legs can move uh, joints, so they can move out to the side, up and down, uh, and also move the joint. Uh, and the feet are stationary as they are molded to the legs. Look at detail now and the face sculpt they have pretty much perfected um, over the years. Looking back uh, to the 10th Doctor, um, his brown coat, his first release, um, you can really see the improvement uh, character have done over the years. Um, we saw a drastic change in the head sculpt uh, with the end of time release of the battle damaged uh, Tower of Doctor figure. And we've never got a proper um, sculpted head on a sort of standard body for the 10th Doctor. I say when that was released, it was a battle damaged face. In the 11th Doctor's figure set, it came with glasses, you know. So, and obviously this time around, they've pretty much perfected it again. Um, and it's on a tuxedo version. So um, it would be nice to just sort of get a standard release with the new head sculpt. Um, but again, they've perfected 
um, David Tennant's uh, likeness now. Um, let's see, the eyes are great. The actual hair is really nice. I really like the details of the little quiffs coming down here. Um, but yeah, the hair, hair is great, and I say the side portfolio is absolutely brilliant. I say the eyes and the nose, they've got really well done. Um, and yeah, I say it's, it's just a really good um, detailed face. Uh, well, obviously, with the technology you have nowadays, um, they can really perfect it. So yeah, it, it's really nice to have an updated uh, head sculpt. Taking a look at the body now, um, at the top obviously you've got the bow tie, uh, which I presume they've nicked of a Matt Smith figure, um, but it is a bit of a tweaked version, uh, and they've sort of got extra padding on the side, so maybe it is a new sculpt, who knows. Um, what I really like here, the waistcoat, they've actually textualised it and printed the lines in, um, so it's not just painted on, which I say um, can take ages. Uh, <laughs> uh, the jacket is, I think it's newly sculpted, I don't recognise uh, the sculptor. I know the David Tent legs are the David Tent legs just repainted black. Um, as you can see, we've sort of got the imprints there from the same uh, figures we got with all the David Tennant figures. Um, but yeah, it's really nice details. We've got a button here, the pockets, uh, strips going down here, uh, and obviously you've got some creasing, which is, just gives uh, more authenticity to the figure. Um, but yeah, so yeah, they, they've done a really nice job uh, replicating the waistcoat. Any 10th Doctor figure wouldn't be complete without uh, the Sonic Screwdriver release, um, which seems a bit of a tweaked version. Um, I don't think they've uh, release a sort of old one. I think they have done a slightly different variant. There is more detail, I believe, which is really nice. It seems a bit longer as well, um, which is more sort of screen accurate. What would have been a really great opportunity is for them to actually release um, uh, extended uh, Tenth Doctor Sonic Screwdriver, similar to one they did with the Matt Smith figure. Obviously, that'd be really hard because uh, the sort of middle bit is really streamlined. Um, so I think that'd be really hard. But yeah, it's nice they've gave a little sort of tweaked version. Um, of the sort of Tenth Doctor Sonic Screwdriver which has been released over the years and I, so I remember getting the first one and I remember losing it um, literally within, I don't know, 10 minutes of having the figure um, obviously now you just sort of keep them in your hand and uh, don't let it go <laughs> As you can see, uh, the Tenth Doctor Sonic Studio goes really nicely with the previously released um, Tenth Doctor figure You can really see uh, the evolution of the sort of face sculpts uh, over the years. Um, to our left we have the brown coat variant from 2007 and to our right we have the no waistcoat variant uh, from the 2008 Stolen Earth Journey's End set. Uh, so yeah, I say it goes really nicely uh, with the figures. Uh, I say on the packaging it does say 5.5 inch figures uh, but for this variant um, the height has standard um, is to scale with the previous releases. So yeah, it's really nice to have uh, this really unique variant of a Tenth Doctor to the hundreds of Tenth Doctor figures they've released over the years. Overall, uh, this Tenth Doctor figure is a really nice addition uh, against the many different <laughs> Tenth Doctor figures that have been released over the years. Again, it would have been nice to have this 10 years ago in the uh, Voyage of the Dam set. Uh, but uh, I say I'm happy to get this now and the ball jointed arms are a must addition uh, which is a rarity on 10th Doctor figures um, so yeah it's a really unique, unique release uh, and if you're a fan of the 10th Doctor I highly recommend uh, picking this collector series figure out for 9 99 very very good price the second figure I'll be reviewing in this sort of multi figure review uh, is the uh, Capaldi uh, Series 9 variant from Under the Lake, which features a uh, load of new features compared to the uh, Series 8 variants, which we'll be comparing uh, near the end of this review. Um, but first, we're going to take a look at the articulation. I uh, say so the head uh, does do a side side turn, probably do a 4360, but I don't want to scratch the neck. Um, again, like the Tenth Doctor figures is ball jointed, which seems standard now, so you can go in any direction you want it to. And can move the arms around the full 360. There's a full 360 bicep movement, the solid screwdriver has just fallen out. Um, they say you've got joint at the arm, full 360 at the hands. Um, the waist, does it do a full 360? Yes, it does. Uh, I say, and the legs um, can move out to the side, up and down. Uh, you've got ball jointed as well. Uh, and compared to the temperature to figure, the boots uh, do actually move the full 360, which is 
Really, really nice. Taking a look at the detail now, uh, and I think they've done a great job updating uh, the Capaldi face sculpt uh, compared to the Series 8 versions, which were pretty good. Um, but obviously, as Capaldi developed as his doctor with new hair, um, it, so they've done a great job uh, replicating the hair and some really nice shades of grey. Uh, in there. The detail on the face, um, I really like the facial expression Capaldi's giving off. Um, it's, it's a really sort of standard version, uh, which is really great. The only complaint I have against the face sculpt um, is down to the detailing, really. Um, the, the problem is they haven't gave him enough wrinkles. Um, that sounds really bad, but it, it just gives, um, it looks to make it look a, sort of like a child face. It, it doesn't um, really replicate Capaldi's face uh, greatly, um, and, it, and it's quite hard um, to sort of achieve, but looking at what they did with the uh, creator figure, um, that it can show it can be done. Um, so yeah, it would have been nice to sort of get it more of an authentic look, um, give it more detail on the face. Um, apart from that, yeah, I think it's a really nice updated version uh, for the Capaldi uh, figures. Taking the detail out on the body, um, I think they've done a great job um, sort of giving that authentic look um, of the waistcoat. And they've even done it uh, in giving him the red lining, which is great. Even though you can't really see it, to be honest, but it's nice it's there. Um, so we've got a green hoodie, which is really, really nice. I really like how they've done this. Um, a lot of people don't really like the hoodie, I don't think, um, in the show. Um, but I think it's a really nice um, variant. Uh, and it's great this, they've done that, replicated really well on the figure and see so you've got the zip in there um sort of the creases in there as well which is great um i say they've done a great job improving the white dots um i so i will be comparing to the kill the moon variant which they had like the, the dots on that were huge and they've microscopically sort of put that down um on the figure really nicely because it's great they've improved on that so you've got the buttons coming down here um i say you've got the, the trousers got some really nice authentic sort of um creases i say the boots are the only issue i say they look great but <laughs> uh, saying that um the the issue is uh the they are too big um they they said so looking at it now they look like clown's feet um and comparing it to the other figures it goes to the extreme and makes the figure look huge overtowering most of the figures um and it's they've done nothing to the actual body it's literally just because of the shoes so hopefully going forward if we get some series 10 variants of the figure um they do improve this issue but i say the the detail is great um you've got the ring uh, which he wears in the show uh, and you've also got just a red little dot there um which you, which is a lovely variant in the show and it's there look again um so it's really nice they've just added a little dot doesn't take much but i appreciate um the the, <laughs> the dots <laughs> even though uh, this variant and the other variant doesn't have uh, the new sort of screwdriver at their points in their timeline series 9 um, they have included the new sort of screwdriver, the complete new mould. Um, let's say you've got all the different colours. I think kudos to character for doing an absolute great job. Um, they've saved some money now sort of doing this, so uh, when they release uh, the Series 10 variants, they can just check this one in now. Um, but yeah, no, they've done a really, really great job. It is so detailed. Um, and it's probably the most detailed one they've had to do um, and it, they could have just done a really quick easy paint job All different colours they've had as well, the golds, the blue, the silvers um, Really complement this sort of screwdriver and make it really authentic um, So yeah, curious the character for doing it and yeah, it's just a really nice uh, sort of screwdriver to have. Relating this to the most relatable 12 Doctor figure, and we have the Kill the Moon variant from Series A. As you can see, what I was saying, the dots are extremely improved, um, making them really small. It's a shame they just didn't do that on the Kill the Moon version. <laughs> um, but it's nice they've created it this time around. But as you can see, um, it's pretty much the same colour scheme, the jacket wise. Um, but as you can see, the boots as well, that's where the real. Uh, issue lies. Overall, uh, yes, really nice figure. Um, I say it's very standard sort of 12 dots of stuff, um, but the head sculpt's really nice apart from the sort of, uh, they could have added some extra wrinkles. Um, but I wrote the colour scheme of the hoodie and the uh, little details um, on the jacket and the jumper. Um, and obviously it's great to have the new sort of screwdriver as well. So yeah, it's just another nice variant to add uh, with the other 12 Doctors. It would be really nice to actually have some figures that go along with the 12 Doctor. You know, some monsters. Um, obviously we have Missy and uh, Clara. 
but it would be nice to have some monsters uh, to go along with these great uh, 12 Doctor figures. And finally, we have the Girl Who Died variant from Series 9, which I must say, is I think has to be my favourite 12 Doctor figure they've released so far, and I will be going for those reasons why, um, based on the sort of uh, detailing and the look uh, of the costume. But we'll quickly go over articulation. I'm sure you've got used to it at this point. Head, turn side to side. Free, can't do 360 because I don't want it to because I want to have some black scratches on the neck. Arms do full 360 bicep movement, uh, joint of the arms, full 360 hands, waist is full 360, legs go out to the side, up, back and forth, joints and the feet uh, do a full 360 as well. So it's the same sculpt as the under leg version, it's, it's just literally repaints they've done differently. Um, for example, the hoodie is blue in this version and they've greatly painted uh, his t-shirt from that episode um, the really nice sort of shades of red um, pink and yellow and say so we've got the uh, checkered trousers um, which are done brilliantly the gold stripes uh, really complement the navy green uh, background color on the trousers um, what I will quickly mention which I didn't mention on the under lake version uh, is the sort of back little clips on the shoes which is just a really nice addition to have um, but yes, no, it, it just it just looks great. Um, I think the, the sort of colour schemes is great. Um, obviously, the silent screwdriver is the same uh, as this. Uh, and I say it's pretty much the same sculpt. So There's not really much else to say. Um, again, the sort of face sculpts would be really nice to change. I say there's really not much else to say, uh, which hasn't been said on the under lake version. Um, I just really love the colour scheme of this. Um, I'd say comparing it to another Series 8 figure, uh, we have the standard release which is so annoying that they didn't include the waistcoat, for goodness sake character. But you can see the improvement on the head sculpt, um, and just more hair, basically. I can't wait to see the Series 10 version, which is going to basically be like an afro, uh, which is going to be really funny to see. So overall, yeah, this is my favourite 12th Doctor figure release so far. All the good and the bad stuff I said with the Under Lake. Uh, 12 Doctor figure it can be uh, related to this figure. Uh, Say so I love the colour scheme. As again, the sonic screwdriver is great. Uh, the hair they've nicely updated, and I like the sort of facial expression. Um, the gold and navy trousers are really, really nice. Um, and again, the only see the issue with the boots is a real pain. But fingers crossed, they'll fix this issue before they release any more 12 Doctor figures going forward in the future. So my overall thoughts on this sort of wave kind of of 5.5 inch figures, um, they're very odd choices. I feel like they've been sort of picked um, at the bottom of the bag, uh, the sort of mediocre releases uh, which can make them a quick buck. Um, so the 10th Doctor figure uh, is a really nice variant but it's sort of 10 years too late. Saying that is a really nice addition to have. Uh, the Capaldi variants are very nice. Uh, obviously I prefer the uh, Girl Who Died variant purely based on design of costume um, but I do like the sort of stealthy uh, costume of uh, the Under Lake variant um, but yeah both figures are brilliant but it just would have been nice um, hopefully going forward uh, we do get some more you know random releases some more figures that sort of go out of the box um, and I was really going to say, the, the price of these figures, $9.99 each, I think it's a bargain really compared to what you have to fork out on previous figures which is sort of $14.99 for a standard release. Um, so I don't know why these are as £5 cheaper, who knows. But yeah, going forward I'd like to see some, maybe some monsters, some more companions, you know, just a bit of variety. Um, but <laughs> we are talking character underground toys here uh, so sort of the cheapest variants they can do they will uh, release to collectors so yeah uh, thank you very much for, for watching guys and girls uh, please comment like and subscribe you can follow me on twitter like the Gallifrey Forever Nice and Facebook page follow me on instagram links to all the social medias uh, for the channel in the description below. What are your thoughts on the figures released? Uh, do you like them? Do you hate them? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, what else would you like to see me review? DVDs? Uh, more figures? Uh, again, let me know in the comment section below. So as always guys and girls, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye!